Let's talk about iron, all right? So this is like a very complicated topic um, and very highly misunderstood. So I took some notes because I am still learning and understanding it all myself. But here's the deal. In most cases, um, anemia is not really a thing. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, but iron overload is much more common than an actual iron deficiency, okay? So iron deficiencies are actually very rare and it's more of iron being dysregulated and not similar to copper being available in the body. So, um, you know, I heard someone say, you're not low in iron, you're slow in iron, okay? And one of the reasons why is we have iron coming at us in massive amounts from all over the place, okay? Number one, uh, our water has it in it from just the kind of fertilizer that's used and the different things that are getting into the water system. The iron fortification program, which is in our food, is also a huge problem. So there's currently nine forms of iron being added to the US food system, and all nine of them are known as carcinogens, considered carcinogens. So the truth is, is that most people don't understand that we have an iron recycling program in our body, okay? So you technically only need one milligram by mouth. The rest, 98% of your iron intake that is needed is recycled in the body and it's there and being should be used forever, okay? So this is a huge problem. Um, a great book to read on this topic would be Iron, the Most Toxic Metal by Jim Moon, J-Y-M Moon, uh, PhD. And understanding that iron is the biggest cause of mineral dysregulation in the body, okay? So I'm about copper. Well, iron and copper, they go hand in hand. I'm going to explain that to you a little bit more. But blood tests that are showing iron is low is really just showing that the iron is dysfunctional. Okay, so um, as I mentioned, copper plays a huge role. We'll get into that in a second. But iron in the body at any amount, like a large amount, is considered a threat. It's perceived as a threat by the body. So it causes that stress. Now we know stress is a huge dysregulator for minerals, specifically magnesium, but all, all the minerals uh, impacting the adrenals, sodium, magnesium, potassium, all those, and causing the calcium to go up, leading to the dreaded calcium shell. Well, there's different kinds of stress, right? Emotional stress, chemical stress, physical stress, and just like copper in the wrong amounts, iron in a large amount in the body, which most of us have, the majority of us have, iron toxicity, iron overload, causes a, a threat in the body, and it causes the stress rate to go up and magnesium to be burned rapidly, okay? So, um, iron overload is the reasons why minerals are messed up and why copper itself is so dysregulated. So if you think about it, if you look at a fortified cereal uh, that you would eat that has iron added, okay, 72 milligrams of iron are going to be in one cup of cereal because they give you half cup as the, as the uh, portion size and most people don't eat that, they eat more than half a cup. So you're getting 72 milligrams of iron just in breakfast. And we need to understand, and most people need to understand that we don't need to add more iron through the mouth. Okay, like I said, you only need one milligram a day, which is a very small amount. It's already 72 freaking milligrams before you've even left the house if you're eating a lot of those type of things. Um, and we need to more utilize the iron recycling program so a lot of the research out there is done on about iron absorbing it through our digestive tract but you need to understand about this iron recycling program so um copper and iron plays this huge role together and having that bioavailable copper and what is the biggest cause of unbioavailable copper is copper uh, toxicity, copper in over uh, abundant amount, and not enough ceruloplasm, which is the protein that copper binds to. Okay, so um, when the copper, when the iron's moving through the body and it's going to the recycling program, there's this backdoor kind of access, and it's called ferroportin. Okay, ferro meaning iron, portin meaning door. It's like the iron door. And in order for the iron to get through that door, that is run by an enzyme called 
peroxidate, which is re regulated by copper. Both of them require copper, okay, the door and that enzyme. So um, if the door is blocked because you don't have bioavailable copper, because you don't have enough ceruloplasm and you've got copper loaded in other places, you can't get iron out the door to where it needs to go. So um, that causes a ton of issues in the body, including autoimmune diseases, okay? That excess unbound iron that's stuck in the body, uh, causing it to get stuck and leading to that inflammation. So um, now this is important to understand the primary storage site, okay, for excess copper, iron, uh, it, where the body likes to go, uh, and retinol, which is like an important form of vitamin A that you need to make all this available, is the liver. Okay, that's where it goes when it's too much in the body. So you begin to have the trouble with your liver, which is connected with all sorts of things. And obviously we know the liver plays a huge role in hor hormones and estrogen. Copper also plays a huge role in estrogen. Um, but it's the storage site for that excess iron and that copper that can't move anywhere out of the body. And then you begin to have all these other issues that happen. So um, it can lead to that non-alcoholic fatty liver disease by having too much of that iron and copper in the body. The other thing are the lysosomes, which are the cleansing agents of the body. I've talked about them. They're, they're the cells that really clean and detox the body. And they work off copper, needing that bioavailable copper. But there's something called lipofuscin, lipofuscin, whatever you want to call it. There's different names. And that is the main source of aging is having that a lot of that in the body and they get filled with PUFAs from eating too much fish oil having too many polysaturated fatty acids I've talked about that this week uh, iron goes there and other heavy metals like aluminum and they get filled with that so that they cannot do their job of detoxing the body so it's important to know there was a pattern here and a shift of how people determine the iron status of your body from 1860 to 1972 the main way looking for iron in the body was hemoglobin and then 1972 uh, there was basically some an article released that caused everybody to switch to ferritin and uh, then in 1977, they really discovered and saw, you know, ferritin is empty. It's like an empty shotgun sh shell. There's no iron in it. Um, and we're still using that marker today to determine iron status. And most people have really no idea what their iron status is in the body, especially if they're using ferritin to determine that. So there's ways that you can get tested to look at uh, iron in the body, but it's really important, most important to make copper bioavailable, make ceruloplasm, increase your ceruloplasm so that copper can bind to that protein to be carried out of the body where it needs to go, okay? So um, it's really interesting when we understand all this, and again, it comes back down to copper uh, being bioavailable and ceruloplasm, all those things. Now, it's important to know Okay, there's five times more iron in breast cancer cells than normal cells. That's pretty crazy. Okay, so the iron is being found in these places leading to these health issues. Um, so let's talk about ceruloplasm for a second. Okay, it, it makes copper bioavailable and it really manages every facet of iron metabolism in the body. It's ruled by it, okay? And it's regulated by copper, and that's what iron is regulated by, not ferritin. So it's really important. This is something that a lot of people don't understand because they don't understand minerals. They don't understand copper. They don't understand ceruloplasm. Um, ceruloplasm must be present in the body for copper to be used properly, and copper regulates that iron. So it's like a chain of command event. So... Um, now, how does this affect estrogen levels and PMS and all those things? Well, you need to remember copper is that key, is the key to activating the enzyme needing to that's needed to make estrogen. And when copper's overloaded, it's bioavailable. There's not enough ceruloplasm in the body to move it where it needs to go to do all the jobs it does. Copper does a shit ton of jobs in the body it will increase estrogen and bind to estrogen instead of being bound to where it needs to go. So this is why you guys chasing all these symptoms of 
your anemia, your issues with your PMS, your estrogen, uh, your issues with your adrenals, and not addressing your minerals, specifically iron, copper, sorilipasm in the body, is the root to all of your other health issues. Now, let me explain this. I'm gonna show you studies for all this. You know me, I don't just spout out information without giving it to you. Um, I don't have it written down here, but uh, all of the, there's a huge connection with iron and gut infections, okay? Fungal infections, yeast infections, and I've told you before, copper, bioavailable copper plays that important role in the gut to be the antifungal, antiparasitic, antibacterial in the body. So that's why you see people, actually they're talking about with coronavirus is using copper things to defend uh, against it because it does such a good job at being anti all those things. You need that bioavailable copper to do that. The other thing is, is those things feed off of iron. Okay, so taking your iron supplements and all these things, they're just feeding the problem because nobody's understanding minerals. They're not understanding the role that iron and copper do in the body, how they can dysregulate the rest of the minerals and how important ceruloplasm is. Ceruloplasm is like the most important in the thing in the body to carry copper where it needs to go, to help work the iron back door, to recycle the iron pro protocol, to protect you from those gut infections. So it's such a mess, you guys, because for one, you guys are doing the wrong testing to find out whether you've got iron issues in the first place. People are looking at ferritin, which is an empty shotgun shell. There's no freaking iron in there. So number one, looking in the wrong place. Number two, uh, they're giving you iron supplements, okay? So anybody who's taking iron supplements, I know mean, a lot of pregnant women have these issues because copper, ceruloplasm, all these things plays a huge role and you need that iron to build a baby and they're giving you iron supplements during your pregnancy. Ah, which is causing extra iron overload and toxicity in the body. A lot of women who come to work with me, we may not see iron go up on their first HMA test, but after we start balancing their minerals and the body increasing ceruloplasm and the body can start moving some of this shit around, their iron goes off the charts on their HTMA on their retest because it's the iron that's been stored in the liver and hiding in these places in the body, causing major issues for them in their gut, in their, um, in their histamine issues, all of this. And it starts to move when we finally get the body what it needs, which are minerals to balance it and ceruloplasm, okay? So I have very exciting news. I'm gonna be releasing a program um, for those of you who've wanted to work with me for a long time, um, where we're gonna focus on this specifically. And it's gonna be a little bit of a different option for you. Um, so I'm excited about that. I'm not going to go into too many details, but just know I'm working hard behind the scenes to develop all that. But things you need to watch out for, don't cook with cast iron pans, stop taking iron supplements. Um, now I've told you already about fish oil, vitamin D, another huge issue that dysregulates these things in the body, increases the iron problems raises calcium which is causing your magnesium to be lost and totally depleting potassium so all these things are important things to stop and i understand some of you are like well why is everybody else not talking about this well i don't know you guys i don't know why people are not i mean it's taken me a journey right to get to this place even in my own practice of understanding this stuff but i've been committed to diving into the world of minerals and understanding that because i believe they are the foundation for health Okay, we were designed to live on this planet and function off of the water, the soil and the earth. In my opinion, God made it, he made it freaking perfect. And we, we, we ruined it, we ruined it. And every other problem that we have is because we're not getting what we needed from the beginning. We were supposed to walk on the earth, absorb minerals through our feet. We were supposed to drink pristine water from the earth loaded with minerals like magnesium. We don't get that anymore, that's toxic. toxic. The soils are depleted, there's no minerals in our food anymore like hardly any, and now we need to compensate for that. But running around and looking at all these different things, I need to take all these supplements to get rid of my parasites and my yeast and my fungal infections, and I need to take all these things to help my PMS and, and my progesterone and my estrogen. Estrogen and progesterone are regulated by copper and zinc, okay? It's not, the answer isn't to take more zinc. The answer is to fix that effing copper. Make it bioavailable to the body where it needs to go. Stop making it overloaded where it doesn't need to go, like the liver, and allow your body to do what it needs to do. Your body will do what it needs to do when it has what it needs. I'm sorry I'm getting feisty, but I'm so passionate about this because I've seen the havoc in my own life. 
and my family's life, to be honest, of these things not being in balance. And I really want you guys to get this, okay? Minerals are the foundation. Ceruloplasm and having it work properly in your body to take copper where it needs to go is the foundation. It is. Getting rid of iron overload is the foundation. Okay, so this is all really important information to understand. And you need to stop taking iron supplements. You need to stop taking birth control pills. Uh, you need to start drinking water that has the right minerals in it. Um, we're gonna have to detox things, okay? And the body will detox on its own with minerals. But the answer is not a detox, okay? That's just gonna wreck more havoc. The answer is to get the body functioning properly with minerals, your adrenals, all those things so the body can do it on its own and, and increasing ceruloplasm and getting the lipofuscin out, you know, clean so that the cells can do their job. And we're gonna have to, you know, we're overloaded with it in this world. The water sucks, the plants suck, everything sucks in the planet. Okay, we've ruined it. So we're gonna have to compensate. We're gonna have to supplement some of these things and understand how this is working. But eating real life foods, getting whole food versions of these minerals is possible. I teach you how in my program, I teach you how to do that. Uh, but it's really important, I want you to know. So taking iron supplements is not the answer. It's not. It's regulating ceruloplasm, making sure the iron recycling program is going. Looking at ferritin is not the answer to find out what your iron status is, okay? And understanding the role that copper, ceruloplasm, and iron play in the body and magnesium is massive. So that's what I wanted to share with you guys. I know it's a lot of information. I have a ton of studies I'm gonna share in my stories um, if you wanna go read them. Um, but I wanted to kind of vocally put it out there. I know sometimes reading through information can be overloaded, overloading to people, especially if you're in a very depleted state because you've got all this stuff going on in your body. You don't want to cipher through tests and articles. So I do it for you and I'll give you what you need to know, but I wanted to share this verbally with you. So I know this is contrary to what a lot of what you hear, but it's, I really encourage you to do the research on this because it's, it's really a massive, massive, massive problem. Okay, so I hope this was helpful. If you have questions, you can DM me. I'll do my best. I've been kind of busy with, with questions lately. Um, and I want you to know that there are ways to regulate and help your body with this. If you're interested in working with me, send me a DM. I'm taking very few clients right now. I am working on some other options. Um, but if you want to get started right away, I do have a couple spots in my Get Your Body Back program where I teach you how to do all of this. And that's it. Bye.